If you think about thermal plants and how are they designed, and as early as 10 years ago, these plants were designed to be base loaded and no one really expected the disruption of renewables to happen so fast. But the reality is, is that renewables have come in, penetrated the market faster than we thought was possible, and significantly disrupted the utilization of traditional thermal plants and really put downward pressure on profitability and O&M costs. The control room today hasn't changed much in the past decade. And yet with all the challenges you have, what we find is that utilities are really struggling to get that right person with the right skill set at the right time in order for plants to achieve their new mission. And so, okay, utilities, as a result of all of this, are starting to think about how do we change this paradigm? So we see that there's cross-training going on between operators and maintenance. We see a lot more combined cycle sites going to have remote start and stop capabilities, but sometimes lack visibility. We see that remote operating centers, which are already fully operating wind, wind farms today, we're looking to have the expansion of thermal plants, but there's a certain amount of constraints around that today. We're seeing this challenge and this need for digital solutions to come in to enable this leaner workforce to be able to do more and also to empower all of these workers to collaborate more. So we see this need for remote operations capabilities in the organization today. Here at GE, we heard that a remote operations product had to have some key requirements after talking to a number of industrial customers. One of those requirements is it needs to be cyber secure. So that security is a must, so NERC SIP and ISO compliant for cybersecurity. The second requirement is to have a robust handoff and permitting process between a mobile operator, an outside operator, and a remote technician. And then thirdly, it had to have the, all of the, the plant SCADA systems that were scattered around a plant that are used to control the combined cycle plant needed to pull into a single controls HMI to really be able to control everything. Even so far as it would be great to have an automated round through the use of cameras. And the, the, the last thing is we had to have a really robust communications package between everyone who's at the plant, who's inside a control room, who's inside a remote control room. That way they can communicate effectively. And that's what we've, we've put together here is a, is a tiered product offering around remote operations. The first tier is remote operations for remote troubleshoot and fix. So a technician can gain access to a controls layer in a controlled fashion from a control room operator. He can troubleshoot and fix from anywhere on a mobile device or on a PC, as long as he has access to your enterprise network. The second layer improves on a simple cycle remote start stop capability to have full visibility of the HMI as well as communication package between a remote technician who's traveling to a site that's being dispatched so that there's seamless, he knows what's going on when he shows up there, as well as the automated round through cameras. The third layer is combined cycle remote operations. So this, this really builds on our HA plant technology that has this highly automated functions right now to empower that mobile operator who's outside the control room and, and even go so far as to remotely operate the power plant from offsite with those groups working together, the communication as well as the remote control operator. And then the, the last level of services is remote command center where our software package allows you to remotely operate a fleet of assets. You have a dashboard look and feel that drills into the individual controllers at these plants and, and really allows your, your staff that's working in a command center to focus on the stuff that they need to focus on rather than looking at just tons and tons of screens. So really focusing their attention where it needs to go. What we're looking at is GE's active point HMI screen applied on an HA power plant, a three on one power plant. In this scenario, an outside operator is going to be granted control to do pre-start checks on the inlet guide vein for a gas turbine one one. The control room operator is busy doing other tasks and he wants to grant the outside operator the capability to, to perform these checks locally at the asset to verify that it's working. So we navigate to the permit screen, selects permits. From the screen, he sees the mobile operator one, mobile operator two, and mobile operator three tablets are available for him to grant control to. He can grant control for an unlimited time, for a time bound period, 
or he can deny control and he requests coming from the operator. The deny also allows him to pull control back, ensuring that the control room always has the final say of control of the power plant. So in granting time, and it shows in the permits that mobile operator one is controlling certain aspects of the plant. Similarly, these screens can be reconfigured so that instead of reading a mobile operator having control, you could have a remote operator as control. So you would have remote operator one, remote operator two, remote operator three, permitted from the site control room for an unlimited amount of time, for a set period of time, with control pulled back to the local control room. Now switching over to the mobile operator view, after logging into the remote connection broker, the mobile operator has full visibility to all of the HMI screens that the control room operator sees. All of these screens are read-only until he's granted access from the control room operator. And he can see that he's not in control of the current access, but he has been granted control of gas turbine 1-1. We kept the same look and feel of the active point HMIs that they see in the control room to avoid cross-training issues between control room operators and outside operators. Navigating to gas turbine 1-1, the outside operator sees that now there's an unlock button at the bottom. This prevents inadvertent actuation of switches when he's in control of a particular asset. Selecting to unlock, these fields now become available for him to control the turbine. Going over to the compressor inlet guide vein, he unlocks the screen again. It performs pre-start checks on the inlet guide vein. A slew test is performed with him actually looking at the asset, confirming that it's in the correct position. After it showed that the test failed, it's clear that he has some more work to do with the asset. He resets the position. And it's ready for a pre-start test again. In the meantime, he's called over to help with something on the BOP. And he has to reject control of gas turbine 1-1. One, one. So he returns control back to the control room of gas turbine 1-1. One, one. While he's walking over to the BOP section, the control room operator provides permitted access to the BOP to the outside operator. In this case, he grants it for one hour. You can see the time is counting down on the remaining time that mobile operator has access mobile operator notices that he has control of the BLP. Navigating to the BLP page, he sees the cooling water fans. He can unlock, perform all the functions required, the same functions that they have in the control room over the cooling water fans. After he's complete with his work, he returns control back to the control room. But meanwhile, on his way back, he noticed that there was something that he needed to troubleshoot on the steam turbine. He's navigating at the steam turbine page. He doesn't have control of the steam turbine. So he requests control of the steam turbine from the pop-up menu. In the control room, a pop-up opens, indicating that that request has come from the mobile operator. That access is granted for one hour. A similar timer begins. In that matter, operational control of the power plant is managed between mobile operators and a centralized control room operator. This empowers the mobile operators to do decentralized work apart from the command and control of the control room and for a more efficient outage, more efficient pre-start checks, and more efficient operations in a power plant overall.